Um, I don't know how many of you watched uh, Zach Bags and Boards, his comic on our Facebook. That may have been some of you, that may have been none of you. Um, but this is kind of a different format because I um, I try my letter best to like, okay, I really I really gin up my my uh, my personality for everything else that I uh, that I do on this channel. But for this, I really just want to. Um, I really just want to do something that a lot of comic book collectors do, and that's the bagging and boarding of the comic books that I've already read, except for when you know you have the uh, the variant. You don't read both of them; you pick one to read. Um, just uh, bagging and boarding my comics, and for me, it's uh, it's extremely meditative. Um, and this this is a concept that actually started with. Um, my friend Courtney, we were talking on the phone while I was bagging and boarding my comic books, and I just remember that I had a lot to say about the different comic books that I was uh, I was reading or had read, and I was bagging, and it was just a nice, calming experience. That's gonna drive me insane. Um, and I thought that it would make good content, and so anytime I have to bag and board my comics, which, as you can see, I have a little bit of a problem. This is how many I have to bag tonight. Um, I thought that I would do it live with you good people. We also have a camera over here. Um, we have uh, Johnny Dim on the mic. He can't hear me at all. Uh, and we got Frank on the yarn. Say hi, Frank. Yarn it up. Huh? <laughs> he just heard me because of the lag. No, no. Ah! I, I heard, did did Tara say something? Did, did Frank? Ah! Say something? I thought I heard. You said my name, didn't you? I did. Really? Ten minutes ago. <laughs> you just heard. Oh, you know what? I think it was. I think you're right. It was a lag. Boy, howdy. Boy, okay. howdy, indeed. Uh, if you are watching this right now, uh, tell us how the audio is working. Like, can can you hear me? Uh, does everything seem okay? Am I grading? Um, do you, do you think I should lose a few pounds? Whatever. Just be hypercritical and like get your aggression out here. This is all this is all about healing. Is what this is about. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little too genuine. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, Frank. Frank, say anything. Frank, say anything. Say anything. That's not even the joke. Anything. I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to be chill. It's difficult now. It is I just did I just did an episode and it was very aggressive. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get the camera started. That one? Yeah, yeah. Oh. We're gonna get we're actually uh we're actually gonna bag and board these comics. And it's gonna be a chill night. I don't like that angle. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, we can't move the camera around because we don't have our uh, battery in. Right now, yeah, it's correct. Yeah. So this is going to be a flat shot. I want to at least get some of the, uh, like an angle so I can see some of the tabletop. I'm going to, I'm going to do those jams there. I'm going to, I'm going to show people what we're worth. Um, gosh, I wonder if I, if something I'm thinking about talking about on camera, I'm not sure. Although It's wrong. I'm going to tell you good people. Okay, well, we're rolling, so it, it's... You can do whatever you want. Yeah, it's irrelevant. Um, do we... Did we... Oh, wait, we haven't, we haven't... We've never edited one of these, so it's probably just going to be the green screen. This is very behind-the-scenes kind yeah, of... Yeah, we're not going to put anything back there. Okay. Um, and one thing about the format is that I just go into it. We're going to find some royalty-free jazz, put it underneath. Is that what you want? Yeah, I don't... I want no... Uh, I want a cold open where I just uh, jump into it. Nothing. Nothing. No formatting of any kind. Um, although with this little flat shot here, I guess I should uh, I should say something because there's no like intimate cutaway. Um, and uh, hey everybody, it's a nice chill night here at uh, Warlock's Tower, which is a word I haven't used in a long time. We don't have a word for the Quite Contrary Channels headquarters. This is... No, this it's is, all part of the Warlocks Network. Th this is uh, Zach coming to you live from the Contrarium. Um, and uh, we're going to bag some... We're going to bag and board some comic books. Um, 
something that actually changed from the last time is that I actually have the appropriate accoutrement. My boards actually fit my bags this time, which is nice because I'm not spending a lot of time futzing around with a pair of scissors actually cutting up the side. See how beautiful that is? Nice, happy board inside a bag. Um, I don't think I bagged one of these last time, and this is uh, I actually, because I'm insane, I buy two issues of Doomsday Clock every single time so that I get the core cool one and the variant. Um, Doomsday Clock is actually a series that I am I'm changing my mind on. I was very, very excited about Doomsday Clock when it first started, and then I think it was in issue two. I think it was in issue two. Um, they, they brought back the comedian, and I was very upset that they brought back the comedian, mm -hmm. because the comedian represented for the story, like, like, he was a lot of things. Uh, he was he was the first mask to go down. Didn't even put my board in. Um, he was the first mask to go down. You know, he was killed by hand by Adrian Veidt. Spoilers. Although if you're reading Doomsday Clock, you already know that. Um, and he he was a necessary loss, and also his loss uh, his loss represented something bittersweet to the first Silk Spectre. You know, because he he was a fiend, but he was a fiend that she couldn't help but love. And so there's all of these extremely complex emotions floating around with the death of the comedian. Um, and it, it represented something in that comic book that we, that we take for granted nowadays. Well, actually, we don't take for granted anymore. We assume that it won't happen, and that's the permanency of death. You know, he's not some comic book hero. You know, he's gone. And that meant something in the story. And now it means nothing. And I don't know. It, it really took a little bit of the wind out of the sails for me. Um, I'm still going to collect it uh, because, you know, this is kind of the landmark event in the DC Rebirth, which, which they've actually already stopped, as you can see here with uh, Bizarro Land Part 1, that it's no longer branded as the DC Rebirth, but just DC Universe. Um, but no, the Doomsday Clock is supposed to be super duper important for that. And so I'm collecting it because I'm insane. Now this, this isn't the comic book that made me stop subscribing to Superman, stop getting the monthlies. I think there's a lot of monthlies lately that I'm just not interested in having anymore. Um, and that's because uh, as I read more and more comic books, I realize that they're just stories that are kind of thrown out. They don't mean as much. They're not going to change anything about the universe. And um, oftentimes they're written to be highly self-contained, which means that there's no stakes. You know, This isn't the issue that Superman's going to die. You'll know when Superman is about to die. Trust me. Uh, it's probably coming up soon. It'll probably be at the end of Doomsday Clock. But um, I made sure to pick this one up, and I'll probably continue through the rest of Bizarro Verse. Um, or is it Bizarro? Yeah, Bizarro Verse. I'll probably continue through this because I just like Bizarro. I've I've always loved Bat Zaro and like everything that they've done with that so far. Um, just because it's so strange and it's difficult to follow, it's actually kind of a challenge to read, and I appreciate that. But no, instead of instead of doggedly going after these monthlies over and over and over again, coming back every month for stuff that I'm not sure is going to be quality, um, this is something from Marvel, and this is the first installment of the Infinity Countdown, and this is more like what I'm going to be collecting from now on. Um, I am going to be doing my research and figuring out who has a cool story arc coming out, and then I'll just snap up all of those instead of buying every single issue waiting for something interesting to happen. Um, now, obviously, they're cashing in on more Infinity stuff because the movie is about to come out, and you guessed it, Adam Warlock is back. At this point, I don't even know if he was dead beforehand. 
I feel like he was, but he dies and comes back over and over and over again. He's, he's the constant messiah. Yeah. <laughs> he just can't stop messiahing. Um, so they're bringing back the Infinity Gems. They're already doing some actually creative stuff with it. Uh, for example, the Power Gem is the size of a building and you know has to be has to be maintained by Nova Corps and stuff like that. And some unusual people are in possession of the gems, etc., etc., which I'm interested to see what the Super Scroll does with it. And I wonder, I wah 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 wonder if this is going to be the thing that brings us back um, the Infinity Watch. Right. Because uh, that was that was kind of a limited run series. That was wasn't was Thanos in that at some point. Uh, Thanos is a member of the Infinity Watch. Yeah, he's not a constant member. Um, Green Lantern. Well, we, we can keep talking about the Infinity Watch. Um, just because I love Green Lantern, I really do. This is a monthly that I'm never going to stop. Um, but he uh, he held the Reality Gym. Right. Because that was the that was the deal. Is that after Adam Warlock? Um, you know, I'll bring it back up. After Adam Warlock um, uh, held the Infinity Gauntlet and was the supreme being in the universe for a time, they um, it was decided that no mortal being should hold them, but no celestial being should either. Nobody should really hold that kind of power. And so it was deemed by this guy named the Living Tribunal that um, you can't use the Infinity you can't use the Infinity Gems together anymore forever. Um, it didn't really stop anybody, but, <laughs> right. well, you know, shortly after that we get into Infinity Cru uh, Crusade, which is something that I'm reading now, um, which actually deals with the female Adam Warlock, because, uh, um, there are actually two, no, there are three, um, so Adam Warlock, yeah, more Green Lanterns, this, I, uh, for those of you who are curious, this issue right here actually deals with a superhero dating app. Which is kind of funny. It's called Caper. Um, so, you now Adam Warlock, while he was the supreme being of the universe, he split himself into uh, three beings: the core being, um, his evil aspect, and his righteous aspect. So, and so there is Warlock, there is Magus, Magus, yeah, Magus, yeah. and Goddess. That's what I was gonna ask because he's done that before in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not, not even on purpose. Yeah. Magus has always been a part of him. Mm -hmm. Well, Magus, like, there are two Maguses, and one of them is him from the future, sent to the past, <laughs> and then lives up into modern day conquering stuff. Um, and then there's Goddess, who's just like, you know what? If I try hard enough, I can make a cosmic cube work like an infinity gem. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that was her big deal. Um, oh, and it's time for more Squirrel Girl, probably the smartest comic book that they make nowadays, which is an amazing thing to say about a comic called Squirrel Girl, but pretty much every time I bag and board my comics, I'm going to be talking about Squirrel Girl because she is my absolute favorite. Well, before we get too far away from the Infinity uh, stuff... You want to know the title one more Infinity? No, that, that particular comic. Is that the first of that run? Yes. I want, I want that. This is, this is number one. It's Infinity what? Uh, this, is inf this is Infinity Countdown number one, Adam Warlock. Okay, cool. Uh, but then there's Infinity, uh, and they're getting so crazy with the with the branding for this because the uh, the next one after that which I believe I have in this stack um, is count is infinity countdown prime number one and the only way let me find it yeah the only way to keep this stuff straight is actually to thumb through the comic book and find the buyer's guide <laughs> Let me see. If they don't, I think I may have already bagged it. It's just, oh, nope, there it is. The dreaded buyer's guide. Right there. Extremely bad lighting. Back there up, so people in live can see it. There you go. There you go. Yeah. These are all the comics. Let, let's see in chronological order exactly what you need to buy and what they're called. 
uh, let's see, Infinity Countdown Adam Warlock, Infinity Countdown Prime, Infinity Countdown Number 1, Number 2, Number 3, Infinity Countdown Captain Marvel Number 1, Daredevil Number 1, Hawk, uh, Dark Hawk Number 1, Infinity Countdown 4, Black Widow uh, Number 1, Champions Number 1, Dark Hawk 2, Dark Hawk 3, Infinity Countdown 5, Infinity Countdown Champions 2, Dark Hawk 4. I have a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture of that. Yeah. As soon as I saw that, I took a picture of it in the comic book store. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Nuts. Gearing up for more Infinity business, which um, as soon as I as soon as I bought these two comic books, they released the same month. Um, as soon as I bought these two comic books, this and Adam Warlock one, um, I got really frustrated with Marvel. I got extremely frustrated with Marvel because they're doing they're doing more Adam Warlock Thanos stuff in order to have like a big event, and this is coming right off of like we still I think we still have some aftershocks of um, Civil War of Civil War Two, which is yet another rehash. And I remember that there was and I like I just started spouting off ideas for events in the Marvel universe that have never been done before. Like, just to see how difficult it is to actually come up with something new. Yeah. And uh, there was one that I was actually pretty proud of. Um, and I talk about it a lot now, if people have heard me talk about it. Um, and, and Marvel, if you're watching, this is free. Just make it. I would love for you to make it. If you'd like me to write some of it. I'm also a published author and comic book <laughs> That is going to be uncomfortable for people on live to listen to. It, it, it will. <laughs> um, but no, I had this idea. It was called uh, it's, uh, called uh, Mar a Marvel Comics event, Paper Tigers, is what it's called. Um, and it's where everybody in the Marvel Universe loses their superpowers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely everybody. And so the Illuminati come together and they decide, this is the thing in Marvel Comics, the Illuminati. Like, Professor X is one of them. Right. Um, one of the, um, like, the Illuminati come together and they decide that if, it, uh, if people learn that nobody has superpowers anymore, there will be widespread panic. So it's up to uh, Iron Man, Reed Richards, and Bruce Banner to make technology so that everybody still looks like they have their superpowers. Nice. Yeah. And the whole time they're trying to figure out exactly why this happened because the mystics are out, the inhumans are out, the mutants are out, everybody's Spider Man is out. Genetic mutations are out. So it feels like it's targeted in some way, so they have to solve this mystery. Did you try to figure out the end what the mystery is? Uh, no I didn't. Okay. No I didn't. Because that would that would definitely take some, some meddling. Oh yeah. Somebody would definitely be trying to do it on purpose. I'm guessing Infinity Gyms. Maybe 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 dust Thanos off. He doesn't get a lot of love. <laughs> Uh, he will. He will get a lot of that real soon. Dynamite comics. Ooh, the shadow. I'm gonna talk about the shadow a lot too. What a lot of people uh, don't realize is that the shadow. He um, something. Uh, something I learned recently about the shadow is actually that his power set has changed dramatically over the years to the point of him uh, actually having extreme muscle control of his face and things like that uh, so that he can actually change his face on the fly um, and of course you know he's he's got his his gossamer ring or whatever it's called something he got from like the czar of Russia that hypnotizes people and bends the will of men to his own um, and the more I read about it oh and him being able to cloud minds and becoming invisible that was something that started with the radio program because it was really boring to listen to yet another description of something he's hiding behind. Yeah. Um, and the more I read about it, the more I became disenchanted with the idea of the Shadow having superpowers in any way. Why can't he just be a magnificent guy? Right. Why can't he just be really good at what he does instead of trying to explain everything with a supernatural? Be like Batman, but not rich. Be like, oh, actually, the, uh, the Shadow is incredibly rich. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. We got a question. We got a question. Hey, we got a question. Well, first, a, first a comment. Okay. I'm frustrated with Marvel and DC. Uh, did that come from my brother? Yes, it did. <laughs> Zach. Yeah. What's your favorite non-canon Power Ranger Zord? 
I, I mean, it comes down to what you really think of as the canon. I was gonna say, what's not what's not canon in Power Rangers? Most of it's not canon. They're, it's it's non contiguous, and from from that perspective, what does what does being contagious have to do with it? They can't hear you well enough for that subtle a humor. Also, it would have to be funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not gonna make it on the final cut. That's that's too mean for Zach bags and boards. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, so I guess if we're going non-canon, I would say anything after uh, Mighty Morphin because that's when everything started to divide up. So anything after Mighty Morphin, and that's definitely going to uh, Power Rangers Mega Force. They have an Ankylosaurus, which is my favorite dinosaur. And as soon as the blue Ankylosaurus came out, uh, I was uh, I was extremely happy. Here's another Infinity. There were actually three that came out last month. Um, no, I was super happy about that, especially since like there was this there was this plot where they had to tame it. Like they went and found their Zords, and the Ankylosaurus was like just messing up so much stuff. That uh, it was the the choice was either you come back with a functioning Zord, or we're going to destroy it. One or the other. You're you're looking at the computer like you have another thing to say to me. Nope. Nope. But yeah, the Ankylosaurus. Um, if we're if we're going um, if we're uh, if we're opening up to any Zord, the Dragon Zord. Oh my God, that thing's amazing. It's got missiles for fingers. Um, missile fingers. Missile fingers, I say. Uh, another unbeatable squirrel. Uh, this was ah, this is forbidden plan nut number one. Is it a, is it a plan full of nuts? Uh, it's a plan full of squirrels. Well, there's no nuts. There's plenty of nuts. Of course, there's nuts. Okay. Like they're intelligent squirrels. Nuts are one of the only things they cultivate. Cool. They don't cultivate defense technology. And like that's that's a lot of what has to do with it because Galactus is gunning for them and they have absolutely no defense. And Galactus the, is gunning for them? Yeah. Galactus will eat a planet that's got nobody on it. That was why that was why Norn Rad became the Silver Surfer. He yeah. he believed that he would be able to halt or at least slow the wanton destruction of Galactus by seeking planets that were fit for his consumption. Another Green Lantern. By uh, seeking planets that are fit for his consumption, but contain no sentient races. And this is a story about the Silver Surfer having to compromise for the planet full of squirrels. And thusly, Squirrel Girl has to get involved. And she doesn't have a rocket ship, so uh, Loki has to get involved. And Loki is the current um, Sorcerer Supreme. What? Yeah. Um, and Loki doesn't have... Lo Loki summons a spaceship, but what lots of people forget is that the nature of summoning something is actually taking something from somewhere else. And so he takes a spaceship that contains Drax. So Drax gets in on it. Oh God! Yeah, and her roommate uh, was uh, was actually the first person to get abducted in this whole plot. Anyway, so <laughs> you need to read these comic books. I don't know that I do. They're very very good. Ah, uh, oh, I love this. I love this. The last thing in the stack was Sentai goodness. Go, go, Power Rangers. So I, this is Go, Go number four. Um, and one thing about it is that I started reading Mighty Morphin recently, which is like those two things just are not connected even a little bit. They didn't they didn't really try to connect them. I, before I did this again, I meant to research exactly why there's a Go, Go Rangers and why there's a Mighty Morphin, and I just never did. Um, but I would say overall... I'm actually enjoying Mighty Morphin a little better. Um, and I don't, like, I think that this one is supposed to be what I've been saying for a long time, is this is, this is the Power Rangers doing their thing without saying too much stupid stuff. Cool. Um, but the other one is actually a little headier. The Mighty Morphin is a little headier, and it's, um, it's a little bit more of a drama. And despite it being the Power Rangers, it's something that I'm really enjoying. Yeah, we do have another question. We have another question. Zach, who's your favorite human, Inhuman, from Marvel's Inhumans? 
uh, oh, 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 you're going to hate me. You're going to hate me because I forgot her name. The dog. It's not Lockjaw. It's the one with the hair? No, it's, um, she's, she's a lizard person. And, um, one of the reasons that I don't know her name particularly well is because I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, because it's got a J in the front, and maybe a soft J, I'm not sure. Um, she's, she's a lizard person, and she's a glider, and, um, I have a great affection for characters that, um, have been changed to not look human you know, who are outcasts as a result of the, their physicality, um, especially when they persevere. Characters like Nightcrawler, by far my favorite X-Men. By the way, something that I didn't know was that the, um, the Nightcrawler Monthly wasn't that long ago. That was like 2005. And I thought that, you know, seeing a lot of the art from it, which is one of the things that got me into it, I thought it was from like the 70s. Um, but apparently that wasn't too long ago, and they really need to bring the Nightcrawler Monthly back because he's perfect. He's just a perfect boy. Um, okay, I'm going to list them. You can tell me what I'm going to do. Okay. It's obviously not Black Bolt. Okay. Medusa? No. Karnak? No. Jeff Leo? No. It's a Wait. girl. Ha! That's, that's, not, that's not a thing. Uh, <laughs> Gorgon? No. Crystal? No. Waglum? No. You're naming all characters. Somehow I know every Inhuman except for the one. Maximus? Ones. No. I didn't know Max. Oh, uh, I'm thinking Maxim. Um, okay, here's there's some guests and some reoccurring. Wait, is this the show? It's probably the show. It is the show. Yeah, just go to List of Inhumans. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. that's going to be your jam. It's like it, it's like Yima or something like that. It's uh, she she's uh, she's a mana nomer, meaning she only has one. Um, this is Voltron 5. This is Voltron number 5. I can't remember if I've got my Voltron, uh, my Voltron 4. This is volume 2, number 5. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't a particularly popular comic book, and so I had to, uh, I had to take what I could get from my local comic book shop. They just don't stock this a lot, and I had to buy them out of order. But it's still super fun, while weirdly, something like Volt, you don't expect Voltron to be topical. But you'd have you'd have to read it to see. I don't want to get terribly political, but there are some individuals in this comic book that mirror uh, people in power right now, and uh, it's very uh, it's very fun while still hitting the appropriate tone. Johnny, I feel like you're gonna say something soon. Ahura, no, Bolzogar? no, Luna Maxima, no. Lock, not Lockjaw's dog. Um. I don't know if they can hear you, Johnny. You might want to speak up a little more. Okay. And just li list them all. Oh, Jesus. Okay, Inhuman Allies of Maximus? That's probably not it. Go, yeah. Hey, go, go, to, uh, go to Inhumans versus X-Men, because she was, uh, she was a big part of that. She was introduced earlier, but um, Inhumans versus X-Men is really where I started... Um, uh, it, well, it's actually where I saw it for the first time, and it's actually where they softened it up a little bit, uh, because they were very much into the idea of her being a monster earlier on, and and this one they they, they feels a little bit more like Dragon Tales, you know, while it's still like a scaly, awful person, it's it's charming, uh, and that that's what I really liked about her. Also, uh, the the spirit of perseverance despite looking different, even for an inhuman. You know, because there are lots of Inhumans that look fine or are actually made even more beautiful by the the change that the gas had um, inflicted upon them. But she basically became not human. She grew a tail and scales and all sorts of things. But she's still an incredibly fun character. Johnny? Um, well, when I, when, I, when I get to that, it doesn't have a list, but it goes into the plot. And I can see all the different names. Okay. Uh, is it Magique? Nope. That's an X-Men. Yeah, okay, so she, yeah, she did something to the, to the Inhumans. This must be thrilling for you, live. Someone, someone else figure it out. W watch, watch, watch me type something stupid into Google and get it immediately. Watch, okay? No Tunoctun, please don't turn on. Marvel, Comics, Inhuman, Scaly Girl. Uh, 
Oh, I think I might be close. I think it's Nima. I think it's Nima or Nija. So it's one of the ones I said. You just didn't recognize it. No, I did. I would have. Oh, well, they give a description right here. I can probably find them. Find what? Uh, if any of you who are watching are currently working on the problem, we would love to hear exactly what we're talking about because we don't know what we're talking about. Um, Johnny, I think that this might be a lost cause. We'll yeah. uh, we'll come back to it. Ah, oh, it's Neef, uh, Neefy. Neefy? Yeah, N-E-I-F-I. -I. An inhuman royal guard with gray skin nope. and reptilian features. She's green. Fergar. No. It's fine. It's Furon. fine. It's fine. Frag. We don't have, We don't have to solve this problem. Mendicus. We don't have to solve this problem. Hold on, almost done. Densidor. No, you're not almost done with the list of inhumans. You're not. I'm almost done with ones that have reptilian as part of the description. Okay. <laughs> it's not an inhuman primitive, I bet. We don't have to solve this problem. Katya Balyakov. Um, I got two more. Okay. Yat Sin. Nope. Loyalists. No. I already said that one either. Okay. Um, so, uh, if I were going to, uh, if I were going to recommend anything out of this besides Squirrel Girl, um, I would say that um, the new Infinity stuff is interesting, especially if you want, like, um, Warlock number one. Yeah, Infinity Count on Warlock number one. This uh, Prime, this actually wasn't rated very well. They said that the violence was a little bit gratuitous, which I get. Um, but I I love seeing Adam Warlock come back because Adam Warlock represents to me this part of American comic books. But he's definitely just, you know, 1960s superhero man. You know, he flies and he projects energy and he can do anything because that, you know... Comic books in the 60s were really about thought experiments and having fun sometimes at the same time. And uh, Adam definitely was that. But actually, uh, we're going to be coming out with a video relatively soon that's going to talk a little bit more about Adam Warlock. So you can stay tuned for that. Okay, uh, for right now, this is Zach saying, I'm glad I didn't get a paper cut. Goodbye, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and check out these links here, here, and here. Uh, I, that's not... Well, maybe. You're right. Yeah, I am. Okay, now i got to stop the stream. Yeah. Thanks, YouTube. We love you very much. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for tuning in. It means a lot to us. Even though I probably know most of you personally. So I can probably just send you cards. We should start doing that. Just start sending cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thanks for watching the stream. <laughs> that feels like they, that sounds like they were in the bathroom in me. They were in the bathroom... Well, in the bathroom with me. Yeah. Thanks for watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out.